was had been riding behind me, he was awake, but he had, was bleeding everywhere. I mean, he was bleeding a lot. And um, he was able to get out, but I, I, in the process, I didn't know whose blood was, it was on, I mean, from my arms, my hands up to my elbows and my daughter's covered in blood. Luckily, I found out later it was Weston's, but she's unconscious, so we, we sat there for at least a minute. And all I could think about was all these thoughts of my daughter and all these thoughts. You know, and, I, and I get it. I know I've had a thousand people tell me how dangerous this stuff is. I mean, we weren't doing anything stupid. We weren't flying down a dirt road and going around a curve at 60 miles an hour. We were stopped when this accident happened. I thought it was in part, but I'm sitting there holding my daughter's head because we're just trying to stabilize her head and neck and she's unconscious and all I can think about in my, in my I don't know, it's not slow motion, but I just all I can think about is all these thoughts I've had of my family and what my family was gonna do and what this little girl was gonna achieve. I don't know if she's alive. So after about a minute, I get her to, to mumble and talk and she, she uh, can't really tell me a whole lot, but so we slowly start getting her to come back around, get Weston out, he's bleeding everywhere, but he was walking and talking, he's fine. Emily, I literally had to sit with her for about 10 minutes before we could get her to actually move. And, you know, so we finally get her set up. So I climb up on top of the razor and reach over and pull her out. And as soon as I sit her on the ground, she starts vomiting. So then that just makes everybody there panic because we're thinking head trauma and things. So we get them in another razor and have to drive three miles out to where the ambulance is. And, um, Guys, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not a preacher. <laughs> but one thing I've shared on my channel is my faith. And that's the one thing. Every event I go to today, right back here, when we were in Louisville, Kentucky, all the places I go to, the biggest compliment I get is people are so glad that we share our faith on our channel. And looking back over the years, when we first started YouTube, everybody, all the experts out there said, don't talk about politics or religion because everybody will hate you. And guys are wrong. They're wrong. I know this is not a church and I'm not a preacher. <laughs> but there were so many people praying for my daughter within the first 20 minutes. And my son, both. Everybody. Um, word travels so fast. It blows my mind. I mean, but then before they got on the helicopter, Dutch and Brandon and Kevin and all these guys up here, they were here. We lived three and a half hours away. They knew what was going on, to, a little bit at least. And I know for a fact there were people all around this country praying that didn't, that, I don't know, I, I can't explain it, but. So we get them to the ambulance. They call a helicopter because they're both in such bad shape and we're an hour and a half from Oklahoma City, so two separate helicopters fly in and we put two of our kids on separate helicopters not knowing where they're going so my wife and i are trying to figure everything out but luckily in oklahoma they're going to go to either ou or children's two blocks apart so they take off and they're gone and we're just like i i know weston was was in had a you know, pretty rough shape but he was talking to me. emily i wasn't sure like I wasn't sure what was gonna to happen to her. So we drive to Oklahoma City and this is where that power of prayer comes in because it's two hours from the accident before we get to the hospital. Our phones have blown up for hours, you know, hundreds of calls, hundreds of texts. And when I walked in the hospital, DJ went to Weston and I went to Emily, they were two blocks apart. When I walked in, she was laughing and smiling at me and telling jokes and said, hey, um, Paige is having surgery on Tuesday, which is a good friend of hers. We're gonna be crips together. We're both gonna be crippled all week at school. I'm like, how? I, she was not hurt. I, I mean, she was just fine, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. I mean, she, she had, they gave her two staples and she was like, oh, can we go home now? I'm like. Wait a second, Not, just a couple hours ago, I, I'm laying there on the ground in this torn up side by side, thinking I may not ever get to talk to my daughter again. And uh, 
two hours later, God changed the whole the whole world for us. I mean, I, I saw everything in my life changing. I, I, I had so much guilt because I was the one driving. I was the one that messed up. And I watched this razor roll down a hill with my wife and two kids and my third son, my third child, is at the bottom of the hill watching it all happen. And the, the look and the terror in his face and his voice and my wife's voice. I, I had so much guilt for those couple hours. And then I walk in the hospital and my, my daughter's just like, it's no big deal, you know. She had a couple scrapes and a little little cut and they put two staples in her. And she was fine, no injuries. I mean, she's hurting, she's still sore, she's at home. But how is that possible without God's presence and without so many people praying for our family immediately. I mean, just in the time from the helicopter ride to the hospital, I don't know what was broken. I don't know what all was going on with her. I wasn't sure if she was going to survive. And by the time I got to the hospital, they're like, Man, there's nothing wrong with her. We, we go go to Weston. He got released before she did. And he had two, both of them, two staples. That's it. One little cut on each kid. And and I know this is a, a homestead expo and everybody here is talking about all the different things for food and livestock and all this stuff. And, and I get it. That's all very important. I, I, I want to grow my own food. I want to teach my family how to survive and teach my family these things. But I don't want you to forget that family is what's important and that God can change your family in an instant. I, I know for a fact that, that God was watching over my family that day. And I look back over the years of YouTube and the thousands of videos we've made. And, you know, I wonder how many lives were touched just by the simple fact of us talking about our faith, you know, and talking about that stuff. I, I, I don't have any aspirations to be a, a preacher or anything like that, but... Testimonies are real, and God changes your life, and God can can touch you in an instant. I, I saw I saw hell. I know I saw hell for at least three seconds watching my family roll down the hill out of control, and there was nothing I could do. It was the 14 years of law enforcement. I've never been. I was never that scared in my life. When it's your family, it's hard, and God changed the circumstances in an instant. And one helicopter ride. They were just on a helicopter ride. By the time both of them got to the hospital, there were no injuries. When Emily was sitting on the ambulance, before we got, before the helicopter took off, we put both of them on the same ambulance. And Weston, I guarantee you, asked 500 times, is Emily okay? Is Emily okay? Is Emily okay? That's all he was concerned about. But the medics were telling us she probably had a broken shoulder probably had, you know, a head injury and probably had all these things and in and, and that 30 minute helicopter ride, she got off the helicopter laughing and giggling basically. And uh, they did all the tests, all the CTs and x-rays and I, I can't explain it. I can't explain it, but I know for a fact that prayer saved my daughter's life. I have no doubt. So when, when you are sharing the faith, I know not everyone here has the same beliefs, but the overwhelming majority of people that I've talked to tell me, thank you for sharing your faith on your channel. And yes, we're a homestead channel, but it's family. We're, we're raising a family. We're teaching our kids, and it's the same for you guys. You've got a family. You've got people that, that you love and that love you and depend on you, and you depend on them. And, uh, man, you know, we're, we're not living in biblical times, but, but God told us to go out. And, and share the gospel and it doesn't take much you don't have to preach you don't have to do all that you just share your testimony and it changes lives and i have no doubt that us being faithful over the years has you know had a huge impact on